Previously, we took a look at how to calculate volumes in a soft meta shape, and really those principles can be applied to any photogrammetric package. However, what came out of that video is perhaps a few more questions than answers when it comes to the more complex volumes. So today we are going to take a closer look at complex volumes, such as the one now, where the volume is placed against an embankment, and we want to understand why we might choose to break such a volume up into two separate components. In this case, we see a large volume, but on the southern end, there is an embankment against which volume has been dumped. And in the previous video, we took a look at whether we measure it with a single volume, like we're doing now, and we see the volume we end up with 275 meters cubed, versus the difference if we separate it to the area just on the embankment and the area which is off of the embankment. And as we take a look here now, we measure the two parts separately, what we find is quite a substantial difference from one to the other. So in the first instance, 275 meters cubed, and if we sum the two volumes now, we end up with about 293, 294 meters cubed. So that's quite a significant difference between the two. And that's all to do with the embankments on which the volume is placed and the calculation method that Metashape is applying. And again, the same can be said if you're using Pix4D, Drone Deploy, and many other packages. So what we want to have a look here is a simple definition of what is happening beneath that stockpile. We have the green area and the red area. And really the red area represents that embankment that we are looking at in Metashape. And we can see the slope as it's highlighted now. And the green section is the flat or at least flattish portion beneath the majority of that volume. So it's simple to see that it isn't flat, of course, and any volume placed against that embankment is going to have to be approached differently versus that which is dumped on this green region. So in a simplistic two-dimensional form, we have this volume base and the volume, which is the blue line that I'm drawing at the moment, placed on top of it. And we can see on the left hand side now with the red embankment area how obviously the volume doesn't go down to the same elevation as the green flat plane and that's why we need to look at it differently so if we are processing a volume within metashape and we use the mean surface effectively it's going to place a line somewhere along the means of where this yellow line is at the moment and the volume it would give us is this area above the yellow line that I'm highlighting now. What happens in this instance is that we lose a lot of volume beneath the yellow line because of that mean surface or mean plane that Metashape is placing. Metashape does give us other options as well and we, we have the opportunity to set the level of the volume. So we might choose the lowest point which is something like this yellow line that I have just placed at the moment. However, if we do this, what we find is, yes, we certainly are calculating a far larger percentage of this volume, but we end up with this lost volume or false volume beneath that embankment. And that too would be incorrect. So the only way to do this correctly is to separate this volume into regions that makes sense, one being the embankment region and the other being this flatter or planar region. So we would divide it into two areas that look something like what you're seeing on the screen at the moment. And once we've done that, we can sum those two volumes and we'll have something far closer to an accurate volume where we haven't included additional volume, but also we haven't excluded volume that definitely needs to be calculated. So these are the two regions we are going to focus on and that's what we try to do in Metashape when we separate it out into section one and section two. What I've done here is I have imported that shape from Agisoft Metashape 
into my TerraScan project. And I'm going to, for the sake of comparison, compute the volume also in TerraScan using TerraModeler, but I'm also going to have a look at that same volume inside of Global Mapper as well. And by doing so, we'll have three separate comparisons. The line that I'm tracing at the moment is an additional set of points, which I've imported because that represents the bottom of that embankment, which we cannot see using Photogram because obviously we can't penetrate through to the bottom. So I have simulated those points just going from the, in this image, the northern section down to the southern point along what would be the line of that embankment. And by doing so, I can actually process this volume using a base. If you have a look at the model that is being highlighted at the moment, that is the model as it would be if I do not include the bottom of that embankment. And effectively, this is what would happen in Metashape if we're using a mean surface or something like that. So we see a very gently sloping shape from that embankment across into the volume. But when we take a look at the embankment now, we can see that it is in fact far more steep than that model is showing us. And that's why I've placed this line of additional points beneath that um, volume at the line of the embankment so that we end up with something now in this image on the left hand side is far more representative of what the area below that embankment would look like if we were able to in fact remove that volume. So we see a, a steep slope on the, the left hand side in this image and a far flatter planar surface for the majority of the volume. Keep in mind that in Metashape as well we know that it wasn't perfectly flat and that's why we see that gradual green to orange change. But generally speaking we see the embankment and the flat base and this is a far more logical and a far more realistic representation of the terrain beneath that volume. And this is what we are now going to use in Terra Modeler to calculate the volume and in Global Mapper as well, just to compare the two. So what I've done in TerraScan is I have imported the point cloud, which is exported directly from Metashape. And we are therefore going to be comparing like to like. So there's no difference in data here. This is just the data exported from Metashape into TerraScan. TerraScan is very nice, of course, because we have the option of displaying the points in various manners and forms. It is designed for point cloud viewing and manipulation, of course, which makes it ideal for this purpose. So we want to have all of our points on. And what we need to do in TerraScan is we need to have a base and an upper surface so it won't interpolate the base like we see in Metashape. So we, we do need to have those two surfaces. So I've applied a grid and now what we have is the DTM of the stockpile and we have a DTM of the base file. Again, keep in mind this base file, apart from those points at the bottom of that slope that I've added, the base file is also directly imported from Metashape. So there's no difference in the data that we are analyzing. So now we have the upper surface or the stockpile and the lower surface, the base, and we want to compute the volume. So Terra Modeler has a, a great tool. Actually, it has two different tools. We can compute it in a prismoidal fashion, but also in a, a regular grid fashion. And we have the ability here to specify the step size or the grid size. And you'll see, I will run a few different options just showing you the result that we achieve. Another good point about TerraScan Terra Modeler is that we're able to draw cross sections through our stockpiles and we can look at the area which is being filled during the space calculation. So you'll see now I'm turning it on for my lower views and we can actually see very nicely how that point cloud sits above that base file that I have created. And this allows us to understand where exactly this volume is, how it is being computed as well when we run this volume calculation. 
keep in mind as we do this volume now in meta shape we achieved a volume of about 294 cubic meters so that's the value we are going to be seeing or looking for how close to that 294 meters can we get using this method and there we have it 301 cubic meters and the blue lines at the bottom two windows now show us the area that is being filled 301 versus 293 294 that's less than a two percent difference from one software package to the other and immediately that gives me some confidence in the calculation i'm changing the step size here to see if it makes any difference a much larger step size but looking at the result, we see no difference at all. If I go for a very large step of two meters, the volume is barely below 300 cubic meters. And this just reaffirms that calculation that we have made that a volume of about 300 cubic meters is in fact correct for this particular stockpile. And we know now, because we have taken into careful consideration that sloping embankment, that the volume is correct for the sake of comparison i want to run a volume check with that slope where we haven't incorporated the embankment and look at that significant difference now 260 cubic meters and when we look at this bottom window you can see the area that is being excluded and that's why in metashape we don't want to use that mean surface because it excludes that area right at the bottom of that embankment and therefore a mean surface calculation will give us a false volume and that's why it's so very important to look at the terrain or at least estimate the terrain beneath a stockpile so that when we are performing our volume calculation we can make the best representation of that base even though we don't strictly know what is beneath it we we just make our estimations based on the information we have available to us. The good news, of course, is that it looks like the volume we calculate in Metashape and Terra Modeler are the same. So again, what I want to do now is to run a volume calculation using Global Mapper, which is a fantastic piece of GIS software that can do almost anything you could possibly think of, including volumes. So I've imported that same data I've imported my point cloud and created a grid. I've imported my adjusted base file where we include the embankment. And I've also included the non-adjusted base file, which is just the perimeter or the mean surface. And here we want to compute the volume in Global Map and compare it to the result we got from Agisoft Metashape and the result we got from TerraScan and TerraModeler. So in the first instance, we calculate the volume and there we see it looking at this fill value, 300.8, as close as makes no difference to 301 cubic meters, exactly the same volume as what we achieved there in TerraScan, TerraModeler. So again, this gives us further confidence that we have calculated the volume correctly using the data that we have available to us. What I would like to do now is to compare it again to what would be a representation of that mean surface or that mean base file to see if Global Mapper agrees with the calculation that we received from TerraScan. So we import the values and there we have a 259. And if you recall, in TerraScan and TerraModeler, we received a volume of about 260 cubic meters. I will calculate it again for confirmation. And there we have it, 260 cubic meters. So we see that we have an accurate comparison between TerraScan and Global Mapper, and for that matter, Agisoft Metashape as well. Interesting though, when we use this mean base, the difference between Metashape and TerraScan and Global Mapper is significant because again, it isn't the correct base. And that's why we need to be very careful about what we do and account for the two separate areas. It would be the same if your volume is in a bunkered region. You'd also want to consider where those bunker walls are and break out your volume into the amount of pieces or into the shape that makes sense so that you can logically 
represent that surface and compute the volume accurately. So always remember to bring it back to basics, something simple like this two-dimensional diagram. And by doing so, we can more accurately calculate our volume. In your mind, try to remove that stockpile. Try to think what would it look like beneath that stockpile. And that is the base or the shape that we want to try and represent or replicate when calculating our volumes. And as I've shown in this video as well, use different pieces of software. If you are uncertain of the volume you've achieved in one piece, such as in Metashape, and if you are achieving the same results in different software packages, that just goes some way to give you further confidence that the volume you have calculated is in fact correct.